Hi, I'm Jared Young. I'm director of the Neuroinflammation Pain and Fatigue Laboratory here at UAB, and this is continuing our series of short videos where I talk about the new things that are coming out of our laboratory and the new scientific findings. So today I want to talk about a new paper that we've just published, and it's looking at how sex hormones can impact fibromyalgia pain. Uh, the reason we did this study is because a lot of women wonder, uh, and maybe you've wondered, um, how sex hormones can impact the severity of your fibromyalgia pain. Uh, for example, maybe you've noticed that your fibromyalgia pain seems to be worse in certain stages of your menstrual cycle than others. Uh, maybe you notice that starting or stopping an oral contraceptive seem to change your fibromyalgia pain, or becoming pregnant, or entering menopause, or getting hormone replacement treatment, or having your uterus or ovaries removed. These are all things that impact your sex hormones. And so if sex hormones impact fibromyalgia pain, those are all things that could change the severity of your pain. And if you've wondered that, we wanted to do this study to see, is there actually a, a relationship there? Um, so we did this study, and I want to briefly talk you through how we did it, though if you want the details, you can go through the published paper and see the details. So I'm really going to talk very briefly about how we did it, and then go straight into the results. So this is a very simple study. It's the same process that we use for our inflammation study, which is we give um, women with chronic fatigue syndrome or fibromyalgia a handheld computer and they track their pain severity every day for 25 days and then they do a blood draw every day for 25 days. And that allows us to look in the blood, this case um, for sex hormones like testosterone and estradiol and progesterone, to see if those changes in sex hormones have anything to do with changes in fibromyalgia pain over time. So we look at the pain for 25 days, we look at the sex hormones for 25 days, and we look for relationships between them. And that can give us new targets for treatments. So in this case, this is an add-on study to our inflammatory study. So we didn't have to recruit uh, new women for this project because we already had the samples stored. We just selected some of the samples to run the sex hormone analyses on. So it's, a, it's an efficient study to do. We take backup samples so we can run multiple studies on the same samples. Um, for this particular study, we only included women who met the di diagnostic criteria for fibromyalgia, and they had to have normal menstrual cycles. And so that's the only group we were looking at. And we only took eight women for this study. So it's a pretty small study. It's just a pilot study just to show us if there's something interesting there to look at. So that's what we did, and then we looked at them over 25 days, and I'll tell you basically what we found. So when we looked at changes of sex hormones over time and fibromyalgia pain over time, we found that yes, there does seem to be a relationship between the two. And that is particularly the case with progesterone. So progesterone, which is a female sex hormone, uh, when that hormone was high, fibromyalgia pain was low. So you can see in this figure right here, um, progesterone is in green and it starts off, this is all eight women combined and because uh, they all had normal menstrual cycles so we could, um, we could aggregate them into a single figure. You can see that during the menstrual period, um, progesterone is very low, but as you go over the course, um, it starts to rise and rise. As progesterone goes up, you can see that pain which is in red, starts to drop. And so those are inversely correlated. As progesterone goes up, pain goes down. Um, now that's a correlation, um, so we can't know for sure that the progesterone is reducing pain, but given what we know about menstrual cycles, um, it seems very likely. So progesterone may have a pro protective effect against pain. That also fits with previous literature because we know that progesterone has some anti-inflammatory effects and we know that progesterone also has some, I guess, some kind of a nervous system suppressing effect. So if there's any sex hormone that's going to reduce fibromyalgia pain, progesterone is a pretty good bet. Now we also saw that testosterone was inversely correlated with pain. So as your testosterone went up, pain goes down as well. And you can see testosterone here is in blue. Um, that also makes sense. Um, we know, for example, that men are less likely to be diagnosed with fibromyalgia, and men naturally have more testosterone than women. It has certainly been hypothesized that testosterone has a protective effect 
against fibromyalgia. We can't say that in this study. Um, we don't have enough information, but certainly if you do have fibromyalgia, testosterone seems to be something that can reduce the severity of that fibromyalgia pain. And we didn't find anything with um, estradiol. So there are other results you can look at. Um, if you go to the main paper, we kind of look at each person individually. I'm not going to talk about that here. It's a little bit too much detail. Um, but those were the main results that progesterone and testosterone seems to reduce fibromyalgia pain. And that's interesting. Um, we submitted that manuscript to the Journal of Pain. And um, if you're not familiar with the peer review process, when you submit a paper for publication, a group of scientists looks at that paper and decides whether it's okay or not. In this case, one of the reviewers came back and said, if you're going to look at hormones and fibromyalgia, you have to look at cortisol as well, because cortisol, the stress hormone, is going to be related to fibromyalgia pain as well. So we said, okay, um, we took some more samples, we got them measured, and we added cortisol to this whole mix. And what we found is that cortisol also plays a role in fibromyalgia pain. Um, looking at this figure, uh, I'm going to try to walk you through this pretty quickly. What we're looking at here is low cortisol is blue, average cortisol is green, and high cortisol is red. Um, the left three columns is when your progesterone is low. The middle three columns is when your progesterone is average. And the last three columns is when your progesterone is high. And the zero on the left is your average pain. And so above zero means higher than average pain. And below zero means lower than average pain. So what you can see here basically is that if you look at the left of this figure, those left three columns, if your progesterone is low, your pain is going to be above average. And that's what I said before. If your progesterone is low, your pain is going to be higher. Nothing surprising there. But if your progesterone is low and your cortisol is high at the same time, which is that red bar, that is a particularly dangerous combination. That's when your pain is going to be the absolute highest. And so that's the risk time for the worst fibromyalgia pain when you have a combination of low progesterone and high cortisol. So that could be associated with a time of high stress that comes at the wrong time of your menstrual cycle when your progesterone is low, and then you may have particularly high fibromyalgia pain at that time. And so we found that sex hormones have a role, but also stress hormones have a role in fibromyalgia pain. So uh, what can you do with that? So a few take-home messages. Um, the first one is if you suspect that that oral contraceptive you just start taking or the hormone replacement treatment you start taking has changed your fibromyalgia pain, you are not making that up. This shows and other research shows that changing your sex hormones um, can have an impact on your fibromyalgia pain. So that is a real physiologic response so that you, you are correct if you have made uh, that connection in your own symptoms. The other thing we'll note is that the difference in pain between high progesterone and low was about 30%. That's cutting your pain by about a third. That is significant. That's enough for a treatment. And so this is not just minor, minor changes. This is a clinically noticeable change in pain as a result of changing in sex hormones. And so this is potentially important to how much the pain interferes with your life. Um, in terms of treatment, um, this does suggest that Targeting sex hormones um, is a viable uh, treatment option for fibromyalgia. Now, I can't recommend any sex hormone manipulations here because there's a lot of considerations, side effects to take into consideration. But um, what we can say is that's a plausible approach for, for managing fibromyalgia pain. There have been some studies that have shown this previously. For example, I believe one study showed that women who have fibromyalgia who took progesterone-only oral contraceptives had lower fibromyalgia pain than women who took combination progesterone-estradiol oral contraceptives. And then maybe even more interesting, uh, at least one study, maybe two small clinical trials, showed that women with fibromyalgia being given testosterone gel, which is something usually given to men but can be given to women sometimes, if they were given testosterone gel, that reduced their fibromyalgia pain. Um, that would be supported by this uh, study we just ran that by increasing testosterone levels, you can uh, reduce fibromyalgia severity. So again, um, 
no large clinical trials done, so it might not work for the majority of people with fibromyalgia, but at least the scientific literature suggests that the sex hormones do have an impact on fibromyalgia pain, and it, it, they're a possible target for to assist in managing fibromyalgia pain. I do want to note that there's no evidence here that sex hormones cause fibromyalgia. That's not what we're saying. In fact, all the women in the study had perfectly normal menstrual cycles, perfectly normal levels of hormones. So we don't think the hormones cause fibromyalgia. Rather, we think that the change in the hormones modulate the severity of the fibromyalgia, uh, for example, by protecting against the pain. And so when they go away, the pain becomes worse. So I want to make that clear. Um, that's the study in a nutshell. Uh, there's more parts we could get into, but I think that's a really good uh, short overview. Uh, again, if you want to delve into it in more detail, I'll put a link below where you can get the full scientific article. And then if you have questions or comments, you can put them in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to get back to those and answer any questions that I can. So thank you. That's all for now, and we will come back again with another scientific report really soon.